Aces. This is the official Aces guide for VFX artists. Let's take a look. So this is going to be a short version of the one hour tutorial that I just finished recording. So you can get this absolutely 100% for free down at the link below. So we're going to be taking a look at how to use ACES in a more complicated compositing setup like this one. But I'm also going to explain a very simple example of how everything works. What are your IDTs? Where do you do the grading? How do you do your ODTs? We're also going to be jumping into Fusion and DaVinci where I'll show you how to export and import and how to, how to do color grades on your CG renders. And a lot of Kung Fu examples on how to transfer from one color space to another. But for today, what I wanted to show you was a very quick setup on how to get started with ACES, what ACES is, and how do you practically start using it in Houdini for VFX. So we have a clean Houdini scene open. You go down here to this eye icon, you go to color correction, and this is where you would see if you're using ACES or if you're not using ACES. In my case, it's already enabled. So like that. How do you get here? There's a few different ways. Now, Houdini already now ships with ACES and so does Nuke, so does DaVinci. Back in my day, we had to set it up manually. Now I'll show you how to do it, but again, you pretty much don't have to do it anymore. So what you have to do is go to open color IO and click on this zip. It's going to download your master OCIO config folder. You can also go here on GitHub and you'll see that ACES 2.0 was just released. You can get the configs here. Now just keep in mind that ACES 2.0 will not work in Nuke or Houdini yet because it requires OCIO, OCIO 2.4. It does work with Fusion. Once you download that zip file, you're going to get this, which is going to be your open color IO config master. It's going to look like that. Now, so what we had to do in the past was go to our environment variables here, scroll down a bit, and you'll see this open, uh, you'll see this OCIO config. Now you would have to click on new OCIO, and then you point it to that config file. So since I already did that, I'll just click edit, and you can see I'm pointing to config master aces 1.2 config uh, OCIO. So here, this one. Now Windows knows about this. But again, this is how we used to do it. Just wanted to show you both ways. We're back in Houdini. Uh, like I said, this is where you would see if aces is on or not. But you, there's a new setting here, OCIO settings. And you can see this is the config that I'm fetching right now. If I revert to factory and click OK, You'll see this is where I'm getting my OCIO and ACES configs from. So they already ship with Houdini. Good for us. Another thing I wanted to explain is uh, I've seen some tutorials and documentation where they say you need to convert your albedo files. And that's uh, really not the case anymore. So you'll see here that Houdini and Karma are going to be doing that for you. So you don't have to be converting anything. You can click on this question mark and go through the color management in Houdini so you can see what's the difference between, you know, when you're in sRGB, when you're in ACES CG. It's such a quick read. I just encourage you guys, just go through it and familiarize yourself with it. But you'll see there's a where, there's a segment here. So yeah, um, color space conversion. Houdini and Karma will do this automatically based on the file rules in the OCR config. So we're good. Don't worry about a single thing. Also, the render working space, we need to change this to ACES CG and just click apply and accept and we're good to go. So you'll see this changed a bit because before I was using my config, now I'm using the default Houdini one. And then here we're going to go to from untone map to ACES. And let's do a quick fireball here just to illustrate my point. All right, so we have our fireball here. And if I, un if I go to the raw data, that's how it looks like. That's our linear raw data. Then we bring it in ACES, but we are still displaying it through sRGB, right? So ACES, and we are displaying, our display is sRGB. So we are viewing it, so it's calibrated for sRGB monitors. So this way we're able to see all of that information that we get our, with our linear renders, but displayed properly for our sRGB monitors through ACES. So if I quickly show you on this museum explosion, so if I do a render, we're viewing this now. Uh, we have ACES enabled. And if I disable it, you'll see. So now we're looking at our raw linear data, and that is not properly converted 
or being displayed for our SRG monitors. So that's why you enable this and now we can see it properly. Now keep in mind, what you're actually rendering out is not this. You're not baking out ACES. A lot of people were asking me about this before and I saw there was a bit of confusion about this. You do not, you're not rendering this out. You're still rendering this out, the kind of the, the ugly pass, right? So after you render this out, we're going to jump into Nuke. And this is the render. This is how that render looked like. So this is what we actually rendered out. It looks horrible, but it has all the information that we need, right? We just need to properly remap it now. And we are going to remap it in the simplest way possible in Nuke. You press S and you're going to get your project settings. And then you go to OCIO. And now we are again converting it. We're doing a color space conversion. And now it looks great. So the manual way of doing that would look like this. So you have your you have your linear raw EXR. You do an OCIO color space conversion. Bam. So what are we bringing in? We're bringing in linear ACCG and we're outputting to sRGB. So that would be the same thing that this did for us. So just one less step. The IDT already happens. The IDT phase already happens here and through this. Once you have your proper IDTs, that's where the compositing section comes in. It's like in the middle of this hamburger is where you merge everything, you do your color grading. And then after you have everything done, like so, you can then either export it to an MOV and output as sRGB. And in this case, now we're going to be baking in that, this look. Or you would be exporting it back to scene linear as an EXR. In that case, it's going to come in if we import that linear EXR back into Resolve, it's going to come in like this. Now, we have to now do the conversion back to ACES or DaVinci Wide Gamut in Fusion if you want to then continue color grading. So you can do that in Fusion here. And again, check the full one hour long tutorial for a lot of different examples on this. But if we just do, do ACES transformation here, and we, I'm going to use 1.2 because that's the one I was using in Nuke. So we're going to go from ACES CG to sRGB. And now we are seeing it properly converted and displayed in Fusion as well, which means that once we go to color, it's also going to work. And then if I put down a power grade, if I put down a power, power grade, it's going to look pretty decent. I mean, yeah. And here would be an example of a fully CGI scene. So we're looking at it right now without the ACES, without the ACES transformation. So let's look at our HDR, right? It's, it looks uh, bad. <laughs> Everything is blown out. As soon as you enable ACES, we are bringing in all of that data and properly converting it. And now you can see, oh, look at us, creamy highlights. Uh, and the same thing happened to our render. So if I look at our candle here and disable this, oof, doesn't look that great. It's burned out, super hot. So it's going to be very difficult for you to do any type of lighting because you're not getting the right preview, right? So... ASUS, in this case, it is just a preview. Just keep that in mind. And when it comes to texture conversions, uh, let's change the texture here on our background real fast. Okay, so we have our lava texture apply, and I'm setting the saturation to 2, and then we can do an... Uh, if you really do need to convert your textures, you would do it here. So essentially, this is uh, setting it to auto, which is just leave it there, and then we can say, well... We would go from utility linear sRGB to ACES CG. And there's going to be a small shift in the saturation. But now we're actually converting it twice. So that's what I'm saying. There, this isn't really needed. So I'll do another snapshot. So that would be the difference. But this now looks quite green to me where this had the, the right color. But... I just wanted to show you if you really needed to convert something, this is how you would do it. So there's quite a lot of these 
uh, IDTs and ODTs. And you can definitely be super mathematically precise with them, converting from one space to the other. But in some cases, the difference is going to be so small. So you do have some artistic liberty to use your own taste and good judgment on that. Usually in a studio, the pipeline would already be set for you. So everything would be quite strict. So you don't want to go outside of that pipeline where you're working on your own. Just the most important thing you need to know is what is your delivery and just making sure everything looks right on the screen. Let's let's actually do one frame render of our scene and we're going to bring it into Nuke. Okay, so you can see after we bring this into Nuke, it's going to look exactly like it did in Houdini. And if I disable OCIO, it's going to look exactly like it did in Houdini. And again, if you want to do it manually, for whatever reason, you can do this. Plug this in and then go from this to sRGB and it's going to look correct. All of your, all of your color grading you do here. All of your, if you're doing any glows, if you're doing any contrast adjustments if you're compositing anything else you do it here before you do the final conversion before you do the final conversion if you do your color grading after the conversion you're now working in a very tight srgb color space so you will get highlights that get absolutely destroyed not not nice and the same applies when you have your if when you have your explosions if you're doing any type of glows. So if you're doing your glow here and then converting, that's the right way of doing it. It's going to be bright, but you can see nothing gets blown out versus if you're doing your glow after the conversion, you're going to get uh, blown out highlights like that. So you can see immediately there's just not any color information here anymore. You're just going to be clipping everything and that goes for your highlights and your and your darks. There's just not enough information to work with like uh, we had here. All right, so that covers the top line workflow when it comes to ASUS. Please just use it. It's, it's free. <laughs> it's free and it's going to make everything look better. Just get comfortable with it. It's really not scary. Super simple. If you want to learn more about it and go with me through a few other examples, check out the mini course. It's completely free. Happy learning, everybody.